Hi, everyone. I want to start by saying it's an honor to be here, and thank you to Arno for having me. Um, I'm here to talk about the Portland Trailblazers, but before I do, I want to talk about the city of Portland. I'm going to make a broad assumption here. Actually, maybe I'll just ask, has anyone by a show of hands been to Portland before? I'm seeing two, th maybe three hands? Four. All right. So knowing that, <coughs> I want to explain the city of Portland, give you a little bit of background on the city of Portland. It is a beautiful city surrounded by mountains. Uh, what you see here is Mount Hood, surrounded by forests. It's this beautiful metropolis that I call home, and I've called home for about four years because of things like this, Multnomah Falls. I am a transplant, and Portland has become this land of transplants in the US. The reason being things like what I'm pointing out here. Multnomah Falls is an example of this juxtaposition between city and nature. And if you've heard anything about Portland, I'm going to also assume that what you've heard about Portland is that it rains. And it's true. And pro tip, if anyone ever decides to come visit Portland, uh, follow these two ladies here. Don't use an umbrella. It points you out as a tourist. Just throw your hood on. Portland is also weird. Uh, yes, what you do see here is a photograph of a man on a unicycle wearing a Darth Vader mask playing the bagpipes, and those bagpipes shoot out fire. His name, or how we refer to him, is the Unipiper. Yes, Portland is weird, and I feel... I feel empowered to use the word weird because our unofficial city slogan is keep Portland weird. It's written on the side of buildings downtown. It's common to wait in line for 25 minutes for a donut in Portland. <laughs> Portland's so weird that when we decided to renovate our airport and ripped out the old carpet, we sold little squares of it to, to uh, Portlandians and made a mascot out of it. And yes, when you go to a Portland Trailblazers game, you might just bring your wallaby to, <laughs> to your seat. So long story short, Portland is rather different. And as a result, to be successful in Portland, you have to do things very differently. So now that you have a broad understanding, very broad understanding of Portland, I'd like to introduce you to the Portland Trailblazers. And rather than photos, I will share a video recap from our last season. They had a great season. Getting to a three seed, nobody ever thought they would be that at the beginning of the season. So, you know, you have to, have to go off the court and trail blazes. This is for the win! Damian Lillard is not just balling, he's winning. He doesn't shrink in big moments, and he delivers. CJ looking for the career high. Got it! Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum, I think they're a matchup nightmare every night. Welcome, my boy, to the club. Portland's playing unbelievable. They got two guys that scored 50 points in under 30 minutes on the roster. For the game, just took over. Everybody has finally accepted their role. Now they got the defense. This Portland team, no one saw this coming. The key, though, for them is Nurkic. I mean, when he plays well, they're just a different team. 13 straight. Winning is so much fun, and you can see this in these Portland Trailblazers. Okay, so now you know a little about the city, you know a little about the team. Now let's talk about a little bit behind the curtain. So I have up here our definition of a trailblazer, pioneer or innovator, or someone who makes a new path. We take this definition to heart at our organization. 
And we do so because we're listening to our fans. So much so that we have asked our fans what they expect of us. And as such, we have five core fan values. Authentic. So all that Portland weirdness I just showed you, we have to embody that as a franchise. Unique. Same weirdness needs to go from both when you come into the arena to when you're consuming our content on social media. Energetic. Basketball at its core is meant to be exciting. If you're not excited, you're bored. And why would anyone want to be bored when consuming basketball? Approachable. In the NBA, sometimes it's the who's who of his, who is in the arena. For Portland fans, it needs to be accessible. We need to ensure that everyone is welcome. And that leads me to the fifth point, which is inclusive. Portland very much values an inclusive culture where it is welcoming of everyone. And I'm going to talk about that unique and authentic experience by starting in the arena with pizza. This is not just any pizza, this is Sizzle Pie Pizza, which is a Portland vendor that we cherish in the Portland community, which also has a space at Moda Center where the Trailblazers play. It is common practice in the US to have generic food vendors where you grab a hot dog and a soda, at least historically, and more and more you are starting to see legitimate local vendors selling their concessions at the arena experience. Sizzle Pie is no exception and they've been with us for quite a few years, at least the entire time that I've been with the Trailblazers. That authentic local experience goes beyond what we're selling at food and beverage. We also have partnered with artists in Portland and the surrounding area to create a individual, one-of-a-kind poster for every game, both last season and we're continuing the tradition this season. It's an opportunity, again, to invite the creative community of Portland to the Moda Center to have a presence, as well as, for this sake, we're not trying to create a profit. All of the proceeds from poster sales go to the Trailblazers Foundation, benefiting the local community. And we take that uh, inclusive mindset very seriously as well. You'll see here photos from our Pride Night and our celebration of Black History Month. We also have Latino Network Night and Women in Sports. These nights are dedicated to communities that have been historically underserved in the community of Portland, and we are welcoming them and, for lack of a better word, turn, uh, rolling out the red carpet for them creating a pre-game atmosphere, in-game contest, promotion, signage. The entire arena is transformed for a night to welcome individual communities. So that's a little bit about the in-arena experience. Now I want to talk about the digital experience and our voice on social media. For better or worse, we have trailblazed a controversial voice on social media. Uh, you'll see in a few of the screenshots that I've presented here, uh, one example is a trade. It's somewhat common in the NBA to trade a player for cash. Um, and instead of just announcing it with a press release, we threw a bag of cash on a podium and mimicked a press conference. You'll also see it in some of the original content that we produce. We, we equip a slow motion videographer on the court to capture the essential moments that define a Trailblazers experience, such as Damian Lillard's game winning shot against the Lakers last season. Or you'll also see the mo what 
quite possibly, if you search for it, what quite possibly is the worst tic-tac-toe game ever played, and it just so happened to be played at a timeout at a Trailblazers game. In those moments, we decide whether or not it's something that our fans would be interested in, and this made ESPN Sports Center, so it was absolutely something that our fans would be interested in. See a couple examples here as well. We pride ourselves in uh, rich content from a, uh, a very distinct graphic presentation to silly quips. Kevin Durant was the number two pick in the NBA draft about 11 years ago. We chose number one. He made a comment at the All-Star game about going number two, and we replied, our bad. Or silly things like, I've fallen and I can't get up. Those are all things that we do on digital to create an authentic experience for our fans because that's what they've told us they want. We also pride ourselves on the difference between native content and paid content. So what you'll see here is an example of a paid advertisement that we put out on social media. We're leveraging the fact that we're engaging our fans on native social with an animation for Star Wars Night, an engaging graphic, because we all know that video performs so much better than static content on social media. We also are cognizant of the fact that our team, our presence is everywhere. I'm not at a, a uh, conference in Paris because no one cares about the Portland Trailblazers. I'm at a conference in Paris because Rip City is everywhere. 5% of our social media followers live in Portland. That means 95% of the rest of our fan base on social is elsewhere. And that has transformed our thinking about how we advertise. 2016-17, only 40% of our advertising dollars were digital. Flip that to last season, we almost doubled it. 70% of our advertising dollars are now digital. Why? Because we can target our audience, we can make it highly relevant, and we, can, we know we can execute. An example, going back to the fact that video is such an important piece of our advertising content, this is an example from last Halloween. <laughs> Very appropriate for the day uh, that I'm here with you all. We ran a, a, a video on Instagram stories that has nothing to do with basketball other than the fact that that player is wearing a jersey. He magically transformed into a costume and you can see the results, 14 to one return on ad spend just because we're willing to be playful on social media. And so what we see is the power of social, where you take the, the traditional marketing concept of mass marketing goes to leads, goes to qualified leads, into social marketing, where we're taking fans, legitimate fans of our, of our team, and marketing against that, and then expending it to friends of friends. And maybe people that might also be fans based on similarities on social media. This spans not just Facebook and Instagram, it, it spans all kinds of things, like whether or not they're engaging in our contests online, which I'll talk about a little bit more soon. Whether they're using a hashtag, whether they're logging in to our app, are they buying tickets, so on and so forth. We also pride ourselves on differentiating between paid social and paid social that's sponsored. And what's really important about that is not just advertising for the sake of advertising, but making a natural connection. You'll see here a video of Damian Lillard. He is the hot hand of the week. Well, why is he the hot hand of the week? Well, we are partners with FLIR Technologies, which is a thermal imaging technology. So it's not just slap a logo on it, it's let's actually think about why we're connected with this brand and how it makes sense for our fan. I'll leave you with one last example. Where in the world we are really close partners with Alaska Airlines and 
where in the world is a campaign that we constructed for them where Trailblazer fans could take their fandom worldwide and present it in the form of a photograph. They can upload it to uh, trailblazers.com or they can upload it to social media. You can see just this last year how many submissions we had in a very short amount of time and the amount of reach. It says 2.7, but it's really 2.7 million is our reach on this campaign alone in one season. I don't have the photo here because I took it yesterday. It's not on the slide, but I'm wearing a French beret that has a Trailblazers logo in front of the Eiffel Tower. I submitted for where in the world as well. <laughs> uh, so long story short, we're only as good as we can be if we're making a, an authentic connection to both the city of Portland and making the Trailblazers a, an extension of that city of Portland. And that's what turns making dollars into common sense. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Thank you very much.